82. Looks like Obama's going to take us to war. He just announced it live here on TV, and I got part of the speech when I found out it was a speech. So y'all take a listen, and we'll probably break in every now and then. Options. They want exactly. And I'm prepared to give that order. Is the best option for us. But don't get stuck with the wrong plan. Having made my decision as commander in chief, based on what I am convinced is our national security interest, I'm also mindful that I'm the president of the world's oldest constitutional democracy. May I ask you a question? Where do you get we are democracy? Only on your grounds of being Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, uh, the District of Columbia, is the only place that could be. I've long believed that our power is rooted not just in our military might, but in our example as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that's why I've made a second decision. I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. Over the last several days, we've heard from members of Congress who want their voices to be heard. I absolutely agree. So this morning, I spoke with all four congressional leaders, and they've agreed to schedule a debate and then a vote as soon as Congress come back into session. In the coming days, my administration stands ready to provide every member with the information they need to understand what happened in Syria and why it has such profound implications for America's national security. And all of us should be accountable as we move forward, and that can only be accomplished with a vote. I'm confident in the case our government has made without waiting for UN inspectors. I'm comfortable going forward without the approval of a United Nations Security Council that so far has been completely paralyzed and unwilling to hold us out accountable. Well, I guess that's okay if you want to be Hitler. Um, you know, I mean, it's the same same thing, ain't it? I mean, you can do anything you want to. King Obama? I mean, what else is new here, folks? I mean, this is getting a little bit out of hand. No birth certificate. Look at here. No birth certificate. He's not legal, and he's over here being King Obama. Ain't that real? As a consequence, many people have advised against taking this decision to Congress. And undoubtedly, they were impacted by what we saw happen in the United Kingdom this week when the parliament of our closest ally failed to pass a resolution with a similar goal, even as the prime minister supported taking action. Yet while I believe I have the authority to carry out this military action without specific congressional authorization, I know that the country will be stronger if we take this course and our actions will be even more effective. We should have this debate because the issues are too big for business as usual. And this morning, John Boehner, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and Mitch McConnell agreed that this is the right thing to do for our democracy. And there you go again saying democracy this is a friggin republic man we're not no democracy we're only a democracy on paper that y'all have created we're not a democracy we're a republic i pledge allegiance to the flag to the united states of america to the republic for which it stands do you understand what that means really A country faces few decisions as grave as using military force, even when that force is limited. I respect the views of those who call for caution, particularly as our country emerges from a time of war that I was elected in part to end. But if we really do want to turn away from taking appropriate action in the face of such an unspeakable outrage, then we must acknowledge the costs of doing nothing. Here's my question for every member of Congress and every member of the global community. What message will we send if a dictator can gas hundreds of children to death in plain sight and pay no price? Is that like any of those crisis actors that we had for Sandy Hook and the Boston bombing? Are we sure that they gassed their people? Hmm. Does 
they have a dictator just like we have one? Hmm. Maybe. Should we be there? No. This country is not founded to take on other people's wars. But we're doing it. Why is that? What's the purpose of the international system that we've built if a prohibition on the use of chemical weapons that has been agreed to by the governments of 98% of the world's people and approved overwhelmingly by the Congress of the United States is not enforced? Make no mistake, this has implications beyond chemical warfare. If we won't enforce accountability in the face of this heinous act, what does it say about our resolve to stand up to others who flout fundamental international rules? To governments who would choose to build nuclear arms? To terrorists who would spread biological weapons? To armies who carry out genocide? We cannot raise our children in a world where we will not follow through on the things we say, the accords we sign, the values that define us. So just as I will take this case to Congress, I will also deliver this message to the world. While the UN investigation has some time to report on its findings, we will insist that an atrocity committed with chemical weapons is not simply investigated, it must be confronted. I don't expect every nation to agree with the decision we have made. Privately, we've heard many expressions of support from our friends, but I will ask those who care about the writ of the international community to stand publicly behind our action. And finally, let me say this to the American people. I know well that we are weary of war. We've ended one war in Iraq. We're ending another in Afghanistan. And the American people have the good sense to know we cannot resolve the underlying conflict in Syria with our military. In that part of the world, there are ancient sectarian differences. And the hopes of the Arab Spring have unleashed forces of change that are going to take many years to resolve. And that's why we're not contemplating putting our troops in the middle of someone else's war. Instead, we'll continue to support the Syrian people through our pressure on the Assad regime, our commitment to the opposition, our care for the displaced, and our pursuit of a political resolution that achieves a government that respects the dignity of its people. But we are the United States of America. And we cannot and must not turn a blind eye to what happened in Damascus. Out of the ashes of World War, we built an international order and enforced the rules that gave it meaning. And we did so because we believe that the rights of individuals to live in peace and dignity depends on the responsibilities of nations. We aren't perfect, but this nation, more than any other, has been willing to meet those responsibilities. So to all members of Congress, of both parties, I ask you to take this vote for our national security. I am looking forward to the debate. And in doing so, I ask you, members of Congress, to consider that some things are more important than partisan differences or the politics of the moment. Ultimately, this is not about who occupies this office at any given time. It's about who we are as a country. I believe that the people's representatives must be invested in what America does abroad. And now's the time to show the world that America keeps our commitments. We do what we say. And we lead with the belief that right makes might, not the other way around. We all know there are no easy options, but I wasn't elected to avoid hard decisions, and neither were the members of the House and the Senate. I've told you what I believe, that our security and our values demand that we cannot turn away from the massacre of countless civilians with chemical weapons. And our democracy is stronger when the President and the people's representatives stand together. I'm ready to act in the face of this outrage. Today I'm asking Congress to send a message to the world that we are ready to move forward together as one nation. Thanks very much. Will you okay, YouTube. I've said a piece before. I want you to read this here. Comment. Uh, watch your fucking mouth. Now, my personal opinion about the president here, uh, he's got a lot of help. He really does. Uh, with shit like this right here, and the stuff that's been going on with this particular situation, um, you know, th this is this is way out of hand. It, it really is. The whole country is has gone 
batshit, banana stupid, and people in it as well. And I'm not going off on anybody, and I'm not going off on him. It's just I've asked him to fight for the Act 1871, and he ain't got no clue, don't care, don't want to have a clue. And you see this, and this was a friend of his, literally a friend, and he asked him a question, and he tells him to watch his fucking mouth. I mean, really? Really? I mean, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. I mean, it, it's kind of, uh, I, I don't know, all about Agenda 21. He's asking a question about Agenda 21, and the guy can't give him an answer. He just tells him to shut his fucking mouth. I mean, really? And, and, and the president is conning us and telling us we're going to war and then bullshits us and bullshits us and bullshits and tells us we're a democracy. How many of you people are going to not wake up out there and see the writing on the walls? We are in trouble, people. We're in deep shit now, especially if Congress does not do something about this. We're in deep shit here. This could start something that will not bring us out of anything but in nuclear war or just plain war, period. Serious World War Three. We're not talking about playing around. We're talking about hurting people, lots of people, not just a few little kids that got supposedly gassed. Whether we know that or not, I don't know. Neither do you and neither does anybody else. It's all propaganda. It's all legal before the president signed it in the NDA bill. Nobody believes it because it didn't get passed as a bill, but he wrote it in the NDAA bill. If you don't believe me, look it up. It is definitely in the NDAA bill, along with all of you other people that don't believe that you can be arrested and put in jail for being an American terrorist. That is all we've got. We have got to fight for the truth, people. It's not time to play with Agenda 21. It isn't time to play with the Act 1871 and force people to understand our rights. And all you other people out there that's telling me it goes way back further than that, blow it out your fucking ass. I know all of that shit. But nobody else knows about this. How the hell do you think you're going to wake them up if you can't wake them up to the first one? You stupid asses. Much love. Have a great day. Damn, this pisses me the hell off.